So I wanted to talk about getting rid of the default queries in Logseek. The default queries are the ones just below your journal and you can replace them by much, much better ones. They increased my productivity, made it easy for me to see what tasks I needed to do or get done. And I wanted to dive in deep how my system works and then you can adjust it to suit your taste. Now, I was hitting a couple of problems when using tasks in Logseek. One was that I was using like a daily task list. So I would use block references, get those things on top and then know what I had to do. And that worked OK. But it did require me to go like to a separate page. And there was a lot of busy work. So every day when I go into the new day, I would have to go to the previous day, see what tasks I didn't get done, maybe copy them over, maybe not. I also had like my task list page and that one was OK. You use simple queries, it's easy to build build but it shows a lot of fluff now you might think that's not too bad it is the things that i'm looking for but i don't need the fluff the thing that i want is like a really short task list and i can easily skim and as long as i can click on that task and get all the relevant information out of my logseek i'm a happy camper so I set out to do that, try and finding like advanced queries that could summarize it, bring it down to its core essence. And I have a couple, I tried them for a while, but it was only once I started combining them with my daily queries, the ones that pop up automatically under your daily journal, that they really started to shine and I was like ah this is the solution I was looking for and I combined that with like a workflow to do steps or like do tasks in the right order every day one of the things I really like about default queries is the fact that they disappear if there's no more items in them. That means that I can easily add a couple of extra queries in there because they will only show up when there is something relevant and the rest of the time it's nice, clean and tidy. And I love me some nice, clean and tidy when I'm working because my autistic brain just jumps everywhere when it gets the chance. And then the first element that I had was schedule and deadline. And that one's actually already in your logseek. There's always a, a scheduled deadline line under your journal. But that one wasn't useful to me for two reasons. One, it is extensive. It shows everything. So there wasn't a quick skim. Two, it is the thing that I need to do first and it's actually last. And that last bit really started to hammer on me because the scheduled things are things like, hey, you probably need to do this today and it's either a routine thing or it's something that I find important on that day. In both cases, I want to know about them in the morning and not like at the end of the day when I'm wrapping up my last tasks. So I wanted that in a dedicated query and I want it on the top. Now, how does that look? I have a page called scheduled tasks and what I do there is I add simple tasks that I want to repeat every day. This one's still pretty empty because in my private setting I've been using Todoist for like a couple of weeks back and now I'm migrating everything over and these are like my daily tasks so I like have a daily check metric cool uh, inbox and what that means is I go there and I reply to all the social messages over different platforms like Instagram and YouTube Facebook all the platforms that I don't frequently come uh, but still want to be able to respond to people and this will pop up every day. And I already did it today because you see here in the scheduled block, it's on 520. We're gonna move it to today because I want it to show up for me. I'm not sure if it's enough to just change the date to today or the Saturday will be a breaking on oh, no, it updates. Excellent. So what should happen now is that if I go to my today journal and I scroll all the way down, you see this nice block here scheduled and it shows me like, hey, I need to check this. It's on the top. And then if I do it and I click on it, then it disappears and I can then go on with my day by going to the box. But we'll get to that one later. Now, how does that look in the back end? If you go to settings and I go to the configuration and I scroll down a bit, then you get to a point where you have your default queries. Here you see it happening. There is this one, default queries and journals. And then I scroll down a little bit more and you see this advanced query. Now I'll put all this stuff somewhere that you can copy and paste it. But what this does is it just checks for anything that's scheduled and to do. And it's marked for either today or before that. And that's what this block here does. So it's scheduled and it checks like, hey, that day is that day today or before today. That is what this less than and equal means. 
and that will give me a list. And then the thing that really helps me out, and I'm reusing that nearly everywhere, is this result transform that basically condenses it down. It just gives me the tasks, which I love because it makes it much easier to read. Now there's a couple of settings, like a table view, no, because I just want a list. A uh, breadcrumb show, which is nice if you do want to see like where all your to-dos are coming from. I don't because I want it as minimal as possible and I'll just make sure that the task itself reflects what I need to know. I can still click on it to get the details anyway. And collapsed, and that means like, is it folded in or not? So for some things, like for example, a waiting for list, that might be useful. But this small thing already helps me a lot. And then we'll dive into the next one there, and that is the bento box. Now, the second element is the bento box, and I'm stealing that straight from Keep Productive with his bento method, but this is really modifying it, freaking it out a bit, because for me, the bento box is mostly, these are big chunks of work that I wanna get done today. These are the things that I wanna focus on. The official method has like a large, medium, and small element in it, making it something that you pack, and I still do that, I just, pack two or three tasks that I think this will fit in the box and then work on that throughout the day. Now, how does that look in practice? And that is if you have like a box like this, the bento box, then I got a couple of tasks in there. I marked them with bento and that means that they show up in this query. And that's exactly what I need because it shows me that this is important and I can unfold them and see like all the steps that I need to do to get the bento box done, to get this element away from me now one of the things that here is very important is you limit what you put in there you can't put 20 things on bento if i have to make time to do something else i pick something else and remove the bento tag so that it goes away there's only always two or three things in here that i want to focus on today and for today that is this video that i'm making right now and the more in-depth video that I'm talking about daily workflows inside my workshop for Loxic for Professionals. Both I need to wrap up today. And this just keeps me focused. It gives me a place where I can put stuff. And also again, this is a very basic query because it just finds all the tasks that are marked bento and it doesn't really care where they're at or how they're used, just everything. Now you probably want to see the query, so let's have a look at that as well. So this is the bento query. It's probably the last one you're going to see in this video because the rest is like similar, but with small tweaks. And that is that, well, you get the title with the bento box in it, find everything. And then this is like a selection query. One of the things that it does is it finds the references for a block. And if it references the block name bento, meaning that it is tagged with bento, and it's a to-do and it's in to-do. So you might want to adjust this one to do it like now or later or doing, depending on your use case. But in my case, I just wanted the to-dos. And finally, there's the results transform, which just condenses it into a single one and sorts it by the block journal date. And that's what it does here. So it just takes the page in the journal day and then uses a sort by function to make sure that that's part of it. This also means that any pages that you have where you put things on, I mostly see that in things like projects, will make those things pop up first because they don't have a date, so they are always the oldest item in the book. So Bento takes care of my mid-sized tasks. And as you might've noticed when I looked at the video bit, the video project has like more entries in it and then there's items in there and each one gets into a Bento. I don't want these Bentos to be projects. I have pages to look at projects. The Bentos are feasible chunks for the day then i get to widgets and widgets are similar to the bento they are to do's that i do and they're marked with a hashtag w for widget and they are straight from getting things done and what they mean is that if i have a task then i try to make subtasks and i make those actionable that means very actionable like send email to y or order stuff from web store things that you can do in five ten maybe 25 minutes, but like I try to keep them within a Pomodoro. There's a lot of food references in this uh, setup. But for the widgets, I use like a sushi icon on the side because food. And 
then the widgets are things that I've worked out and they show everything. So this, this can be a long list, but it's also a list that I don't have to think about. I am good with thinking in the morning, usually in the afternoon, less so. My brain is just kind of zoning out and that point in time, the widgets are nice because I can just look at it and it's a bit like folding laundry. I just take it, fold it, put it away and it's the same for all the widget tasks that I have left. I collect those in the morning and then I just start churning them. I just cranking widgets as David Allen used to say. I love this setup of work because it means that I can make this list of things to do. Now I don't try to mark everything as a widget. A widget really means this task, once it gets that tag is doable, it's actionable, it's something I can look at and do in no time. Meaning that even if I feel totally down and everything is up and my brain just doesn't want to function with me, I can just look at the task and do it. So this is like my current widget overview. There's not too many because I'm doing recording today, which are big chunks of work that I just need to sit down and do. But the top one, like look at this Twitter thread and apply the 4A framework. So it was something I was reading. And then if I hoover over it, 4A framework will tell me some information but it's something that I can concretely do. And then if I want to work on it, I can always click on the first thing to get like all the details. So what widgets do to me is just make things actionable and small. And you might notice something like the add email there, and I'll get to that later, because that's the context that I want to do things in. So making widgets is easy. I just make it a to-do, add a hashtag W to it, a tag, and it will show up on my widget list. And the only thing that I mentally self have to do is make sure that it's actually something that I can get done. If it's on the widget list and I can't get it done, I either fix that by making it so that I can get it done or I remove the tag and get it off my widget list because it's a bento thing or a plan thing or a large set. And then the final thing that you might have noticed is that I have context. So I have tags that are named at, and at means at location. So I have at email, I have at studio, I have at home. And I use those contexts in combination with an advanced query to get results from where I'm at. So if I make tasks and I know I want to do them, but I don't know when I'll do them, but I do know where I need to do them, I'll mark them with one of these at marks to give them a location uh, at studio when i'm recording i can only do that in the studio so by adding an at studio i know like when i get into the studio and i open the at studio page then that will show up this is my at studio page and what it has is it has open tasks for studio shows me everything that is marked or a sub of the studio tag and under it i have linked references and i usually filter those on done meaning that the bottom one only shows me stuff that's done and it will start to auto close once you hit like i believe 50 items because loxic has like a fold in uh, method then and this allows me to get a location or to get in a certain mood and then go like oh yeah this is what i want to do so i have like the email one because i have emails that i need to send or reply or do to but emails are stuff that i'm not very good at Okay, editing bus here. So while I was editing this, I recorded it last week. Um, I forgot to mention that this whole video is about the now. This is why you have scheduled, which is stuff you do today, bento, the things you picked up for today, and widgets, small tasks that you need to get done and that you can do right away. And I'm not focusing on the planning part. So for the planning part, I'm gonna make a separate video where I'm gonna talk about how do I get all my tasks aligned but the short summary for it is, if you wanna know now, is that I have my my task list page and that one has my projects, my videos, my A, B, C priorities, and then of course, the little bit of context that I talked about just now. Those things I use to decide what am I going to pick up today? But it's a different video, so if you're confused on that part, this is the clarification. So that was an overview of how the system currently works. There's links in the description to pages with more information, including the queries, but also templates to apply the queries in different pages. And remember, you're awesome. Keep it up.